I'd like to uh, call the September Waterworks and Mining Commission meeting to order. And uh, I would entertain approval or amendments to the minutes of the regular commission meeting on August 14th. I'll so move. Okay, I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And uh, we're without action uh, items. So let's move into the department uh, updates and uh, safety report if it's first. Any questions for Sean? Thank you for bringing Jeff up to speed where you're at. We're still going to be doing that. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks. It'll, it'll be easier that way. Usually we do programs throughout the year, but and they have to be reviewed annually, but just to speed up the process, get Jeff up to speed, because he's going to be new to the process. Right. Just be easy to sit down, have a good, and then we'll get back to our normal stuff next week. Okay, good. Thank you. Excuse me, Matthew, I need you. It's bad when she calls you Matthew. <laughs> she says, that was a full name. Yes. That made me scared. <laughs> <laughs> Report to the front office. <laughs> okay. I think we we'll, we have a temporary hiatus here. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah. Okay. We'll go hand to medic. Okay, now at one time there was a separate safety meeting and that was going to be combined with the office. Did that ever get initiated or is that still on hold? No, that's still, we, um, when we do safety trainings now, we have a separate time where we just kind of talk after the meeting to see what type of of different safety incidents, uh, different things going on that we can discuss. So that happens when we have our normal training as well. Okay, good, thank you. There's no more questions for the safety area. Can we move to the line superintendent's report? Any questions for Josh? On poll replacements, I saw, I think it was a, on TV, some video where they had a storm come through or whatever, and it looked like, I want to say they were, um, or the pole got like split or something, and it almost looked like they were pulling it back together. I mean, is there a is there a, a point at which you'd salvage a pole versus replace it? Very few get salvaged. Okay. At the end of the day, yeah. Okay. You can temporarily do that. But. Okay, it might have been a temporary fix or something. Okay. We continue to have some tree related. Um, are these? trees that are inaccessible for, to our crews for some reason for the most part or for the most part it's like a tree in someone's yard that tears their service down something we wouldn't do so you wouldn't normally address that until it's actually a problem correct yeah. well i think i don't think you can right if it's, it's not on their property or, yeah, it's touchy if they can hire someone to do it we don't do it okay Can you tell me the difference between and these uh, callings other and unknown? Well, the other was a communications line. Unknown means we didn't find a cause. So it just came back and we don't know why. Yeah, know. so we run the line, can't see anything that would have took it out, uh, pulls the fuse back in and everything stays in, and mm -hmm. it's just an unknown cause. Uh, it's typically a squirrel. There's yeah. a squirrel that they couldn't find. If there are no more questions for Josh, can we move to the Water Department operations? And do we need to have an introduction? Uh, Josh, Relief Supervisor, uh, one member of the Water Group. Okay. So Adam is in Madison. Okay. So Josh, do you have anything for us in particular? No. Here to answer a few questions for you. Hopefully. Okay. 
did you determine anything from your disinfection analysis? Uh, those are good. Um, we do them four times a year, uh, four different locations. Uh, the numbers are really good. Um, we've been doing a little um, pre-flushing before we take the samples, so that's helped out a lot. So. So you're checking for bacterial counts? Uh, it's a uh, disinfection byproducts between organic matter and then our chemical that we treat it with, which is chlorine. It's a combination of both of them. Okay. Um, so the, the numbers have to, too high is bad. Um, lower the number, obviously, the better. So ours are right around 50, 40 to 50. Once you get up into the 80s and 90s, that's when it gets. 40 to 50 parts per million? Yeah, parts per million. Yep. I know we've had in the past, we've had issues, uh, people complaining that are on, what do you call them, dead end lines or whatever, mm -hmm. that they get high chlorine rates or whatever. Yeah. Is there still, does that still occur? Or does uh, the flushing not so or much. So we, much we flush quite often. There's yeah. a lot of them that are on a monthly, bi-monthly, um, uh, yearly. So, I mean, all the all the dead ends get attention. You know, during the winter, obviously, they don't get flushed, you know, but um, as late as we can and as early as we can. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks. Thank you, Josh. If there are no more questions, can we move to the customer service and support supervisor's report? Lynn, thank you for clarifying or explaining when there's differences between years with the collections and oh. maybe mm -hmm. what may cause some of that. Mm -hmm. That's very helpful, thank you. You're welcome. Can you comment, Lynn, on the results of the disconnects versus reconnects? It looks like we're, we lost uh, 13 clients here. Well, some of that depends on the end of the month versus, because I'm really cutting this off as of the end of the month and some will get reconnected the following day, which just could happen to be September. So there's a little bit of a discrepancy there, and there's also a discrepancy if um, a landlord has it reconnected for a tenant that possibly vacated the property. And we do still have you know, some people on the disconnect list. So there's still a good number? A handful, not a lot, but there's still a handful of people that are on the permanent disconnect list and have been on that for a couple months. Mm -hmm. And those homes are still occupied? No, I don't think so. We only found, for the heat advisory, we actually only found two homes that were still occupied that we had to reconnect. The rest of them are vacant, but they've chosen to leave the power off. So how does that heat advisory work? I mean, is that based on a forecast or something that it looks like it's going to be hot and humid? Or? I usually, I look at the National Weather Service okay. and they issue the heat advisory for our area. I think it has to do with the temperature and the humidity, and I'm not exactly yeah. sure what the actual calculation is, but if they issue the advisory, we do the notifying and the verifying vacancy, and we'll reconnect. And then when does that, so is it the National Weather Service or a PSC that says, you know? Well, the PSC says we should okay. reconnect during a heat advisory, meaning okay. they always give us that option, but they also tell us to err on um, being cautious okay. if we wouldn't reconnect, so I guess we always just do it to the certain. <clears throat> and then did they, does the Weather Service or whatever then say, okay, the heat advisory is off? Then yes. So I just keep looking at their website, okay. and then when they issue the, um, they, they take that off of their yeah. website, then we'll go ahead and we will um, re-disconnect. Okay. We always hang a tag at these properties as well, indicating that we're only going to turn it on during the heat advisory, and it's going to be disconnected again as soon as that heat advisory is lifted. Okay. Thank you. Do you ever notice that somebody removes those tags? Um, you know, they can blow away in the wind, sure, they can remove them, but we do the best we can. We can't help that. That's, I mean, we call them. If they don't answer, we try to call the landlord. If we still can't get a hold of them, then we put a tag on the door. Now, this would be rather it's multi-dwelling um, or single-dwelling properties? It doesn't matter. 
do we ever try and cross-reference that to like uh, where the city might say that the property's vacant or back taxes owed or something like that, trying to figure out if anybody's kind of like abandoned the property? We don't really do that. I mean, we may do that if, if a property stays in the disconnect list for a period of time, but we're always going to check for vacancy regardless of that because there's somebody in the home. Thank you. We'll, we'll visit the property. I mean, someone will physically go there at times too and kind of look in the window, see if there's cars around, mm -hmm. see if you know if there's a neighbor out, see if they know anything. So again, like during a heat advisory, we're definitely trying to take every step to make sure if there's a dangerous condition in that house that they do have electricity and can stay cool. There no more questions for Lynn. Can we move to the director of finance report? Questions for Jeff? Well, uh, still on that, um, just paging through here, I did want to commend um, the write up on Jim, was was very nice. So thanks to whoever put that together. Very nice. So, any questions for Jeff? Finance report? Talk a little bit about the uh, water tower agreements. Sure. So I just had a meeting today with our attorney, but Sprint approached us this summer to renegotiate the lease and in pulling the lease and taking a look at it. It's the one that's on the it's the East Water Tower, kind of up by uh, SS Peter and Paul up there. And in looking at the lease, there were some. Um, pieces in there that were not advantageous to us. Uh, the biggest one is in the agreement we were giving away our immunity as a municipality and kind of going in joint liability if there was an issue that, that Sprint caused. So that's something we're working through. They wanted to reduce the lease payments. Obviously they, that's what they're trying to do at the end of the day. Um, we'll, we'll negotiate based on our other lease agreements that we have in the area with the other cell providers and, and try to find a number in the middle to work with them, but um, they seem pretty willing to discuss and at first glance they're willing to pay for the cost to, with the attorneys to redo the lease agreement, so I think it'll be a positive thing and hopefully the next couple of months we'll have a, a new agreement that's, that's better for everybody. Any other questions for Jeff? Questions on the numbers? It looks like we're going to proceed with the uh, gas fee cards. Yeah, that's one thing I just wanted to put in here and point out. We talked a little bit about it last month. We did went back and looked at three other programs. One charged a monthly fee. One was a little more limited. And then Quick Trips was one way to earn a little bit of a rebate on each purchase, plus it's also tied to a larger fuel network. So if our crews ever need to leave the area or even the state for mutual aid, they can still use those at other other brands, gas stations. So it should be a good program for us and it'll save time by not having to go to the city garage okay. every other day to fill up the trucks and they can kind of do it whatever area they're working and in. you were having communications with the city the city of the change. Yep, and the city was okay with us making okay, change. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Notice a significant difference in the transfer from investments versus the transfer to investments. What's happening there? Page so what we'll pull from the investments are the pilot payments and the bond payment uh, twice a year. So in this case, we've paid our three pilot payments, the January payment, the April payment, and the July payment. So that's the majority of that, but then every month we're sticking in to the fund. So at the end of the year, it's pretty close to a wash. So right now it's just kind of a little top heavy of more money that we pulled out than we put in, but over the next couple of months, that'll change course. and. We won't we'll take out a small amount because we'll have an interest payment October 1st for our bond debt of about $34,000, $35,000. So we'll pull that amount out of investments, but 
That'll be the last transfer we'll have to make for the year. And we'll be able to, that 260,000 that we put in August, that'll be the minimum amount we'll put in the next couple of months. So that number should grow by, I would hope a million over the last four months. All right. Any other questions for Jeff? to the information systems administrator's report. That CISA, is that like a government body? It's actually a department of the Department of Homeland Security. It is. Okay. So why is our wireless slow? Uh, it's just because it's tenured. The access points themselves, the hardware is actually tenured. Who's the hardware manufacturer that we're using and going to? Uh, we're using Meraki. We're going to Meraki. It's a Cisco product. Any other questions for Matt? Can you describe to me a little bit about the on-site and off-site backup systems? What yeah. you're using, what you're changing? Um, we're using Beam as the backup solution uh, because it handles the virtual servers, our virtual environment. So what we do is we do um, a local backup. Of, we hold 12 months. We hold one week on the actual backup device that we're using, you know, the server that does the actual backup. And we have another device, an uh, external hard drive per se, mm -hmm. which is the piece that's gonna get replaced uh, in the state of backup hardware replacement. Uh, and that holds 12 months on site. Um, then we push to the cloud, which is a seven year backup to conform with the PSC regulations. And the on site backups, are they online all the time or you just spin those up when you're back now too. Uh, they're actually online all the time. They're okay. on a separate VLAN, on a separate network. Okay. Any other questions for Matt? Oh, how's your um, uh, mail server uh, change? Coming? The migration? Yeah. Yeah, we start, I have a discussion on Friday with them uh, for moving forward to get that all set up. We have a schedule we send that to me. Yeah. Great, thanks. Yeah, right now it's scheduled for the end of September the 23rd through the 28th. I think it's the migration. I think it's that one. Might be the 26th through the 28th. Starts on a Monday, goes through a Wednesday, so 23 days for the migration. Then will it be out of service during that time? Uh, that's what I need to find out on Friday. Okay, let's move to the uh, key accounts and conservation manager report. Looks like, Sean, you're trying to create some excitement here. <laughs> Once again, after four years, yes. You're going you to do a little face painting yourself? Or? Uh, no, no, I was, I was not assigned to that. I assume, I assume it's October 10th, right? Did I put August 10th? Yeah. yeah, that's a typo. Okay, October right, 10th. Yeah. Um, from two to five. And what's a bayonet fuse? You asked that in an email from two years ago. You don't, Did you I? don't remember I that. Don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, on a pad mounted transformer, the fuses that are in that transformer to protect it are called bayonet fuses because they look like a bayonet. So any type of underground transformer has a bayonet fuse in it. Okay. Yeah. It'll be two years again. Yeah, okay. <laughs> But that was not on our side of the. No. That was no. Well, that that fuse is designed to protect our transformer. Um, so it could be that the fuse it gets nicked over time, and it could have just been um, a bad fuse by this point, um, or it could have been that they had a startup of maybe they started two large motors at the same time, and the inrush 
you know, cause the fuse to go, but it did exactly what it's supposed to do, protect the transformer from being damaged. So. Sean, would you like to share with the public the um, open house that's coming up next month? Yes, it, it'll be similar to other years. Going back four years, it's been, um, it will be October 10th, two to five. Um, we have a few new tables that we've added. And one of those is gonna be, we're gonna have some raffle prizes, which we have not had in the past. Um, we also will have a solar, local solar installer there, which I think will be a nice added feature. Do you know um, who that would be? Um, Rackets. Oh, yes, okay. Clean energy. Yeah. Um, refreshments will change slightly. We will be doing rock or cocoa slice pizza now. So that will also change. Um, and we'll still have the typical bucket truck rides, um, fire extinguisher games, equipment, call back. So it'll be very similar. We just made a few tweaks to it. My focus on energy is going to be there, right? They will. Um, this year, I, we are adding a commercial energy advisor as well as a residential energy advisor. Other years that we had the open house, we just focused on the residential, but I thought it would be important to have commercial there as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sounds like a good show. Um, if there are no more questions for Sean, can we move to the electrical engineer's report? I guess I have a question on what what do we normally do to avoid this tank being full uh, when there's a potential spill? Uh, normally we don't have a tank full of oil being short at our substations. This was a temporary thing because this transformer is down the length of parts. Uh, we had this transformer get looked at last month and we, we determined that it needed new oil pitch bushings and a new load tap changer. So instead of putting the oil back in while it's not running, we decided to keep the oil out of it. And that was EPS's uh, responsibility. But it's our Containment in our tank? No, it's their tank. And it's their, their tank platform, yeah. and their containment platform? Yep, so in the end, I said, I would like to thank EPS for taking responsibility and swift action, which was truly, they sent guys over as soon as they could. And they took responsi full responsibility for the whole situation. Is there any DNR notification nope. required here? Nope, since no oil left the substation. And it was less than, I think, like 1,000 gallons was it that? Yeah, so I got Sean right away when Tyler found this, and um, Sean was real helpful to tell us what was going on. But um, I always thought that uh, it was something we would have to report, but because it was less than 1,000 gallons, does that sound right, Sean? There was no EPA reporting that was required. Correct, and yeah. because all of the oil, it goes to your SPCC plan because all the oil was contained there at the substation. Literally, the gravel did exactly what it was supposed to do. The container that we had did exactly what it was supposed to do. EPS came and had all the, the things taken care of. So, yeah, one of those unfortunate things, but everything did what it was supposed to do perfectly. So. Right, and they, they did have a rubber bladder underneath this trailer that was sized for the containment. The only problem is we had a huge rainfall on Monday night, and so then, the water washed, diluted the oil, and some of it over went over the top. And Tyler found it the next morning on that morning. So, but they cleaned it up all on their expense, and they did a real good job. And so we're very happy with what how it was handled. Thank you for bringing it to our attention and photos help too. Yeah. <laughs> There are no more questions for Tyler, to the Director of Engineering and Electrical Operations. Um, 
I might have passed this two years ago, but <laughs> DP-UFLS. Yeah, so we're a distribution provider with under frequency load setting equipment. <coughs> okay, now can you explain that? Yeah, okay. So um, under NERC, we fall into certain categories. Um, when they first created NERC, we actually had 33 regulations that we had to follow. But over time, and they reevaluated us, they dropped um, the uh, load serving enti entity uh, designation and the distribution provider designation. And they focused only on us being a distribution provider with under frequency load check. So how that works is uh, any equipment above 50 kV can fall into these categories. And um, we have our interconnection points with ATC that are at 115 kV and at 69 kV. So that's why uh, NERC is interested in us. Otherwise, we're such a little entity, they wouldn't be. But um, unfortunately, now that I look back at it, ATC, as part of the NERC requirements, needed to have utilities have under frequency load shedding equipment. And because I had updated all of the protective relays, our relays had the functionality to do that. So they contacted us, ATC did, and said, we would like you to be part of this program. So then what happens is ATC has to do um, a spreadsheet that says, okay, water and light, we need you to shed 4% of load at, uh, normally you're at 60 hertz at 59.7 hertz, and I need another 2% shed at 59.6 hertz, and I need another 2% shed at 59.3 you know, hertz and then you have to follow those instructions and then you have to prove to them that you're actually doing what you're told to do and so um that's pretty much what this is explaining is that we've been in that program now for probably 12 years and we are always in compliance with the program but NERC keeps updating and changing the requirements and now there's a new requirement called eop 11-4 eop stands for emergency operating procedure and that is just an official document that um, we have to write that just says, how are we complying with this under frequency protection? Is that kind of? Yeah, and we talked about this at a, another yeah. meeting. Yeah, and you and wanted us to contact some of our major right. players. And uh, we, we haven't done that at the point where I, I really think that sometimes if you start telling the customers that you're, you got this in their plan, that that's actually worrying them over something that probably will never happen. And now they're confused when they get an actual outage, like the bayonet fuse blows, that then they're thinking, well, did we actually get knocked off because of under frequency? And I hate to um, scare people for something that probably will never happen. I would rather they are aware of the real, more urgent problems of something else. Um, so. That's where, you know, there's a fine line. But if, if you really want us to contact these people, John, I'll do it. But I, I think it might be a bad thing just because it might confuse them more than it'll help them. I never accept that. Okay. All right. Argument. Okay. You know, if you're the person that has an operation that's going to be affected, there needs to be transparency. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and Sean and I do a good job at, at least meeting with them, but we can, we'll add that as part of a, something where we go talk with them about it and explain it to them. Yeah. Okay. I, th I think, you know, it may never happen, but if it yeah. does happen, and I yeah. don't know, yeah. it's a whole different the, ball game. If this happens, the entire national grid is going to be down, so everybody's going to be out. Pretty much, because really what this is saying is we don't have enough generation to handle the load. So we're going to try to start picking off the higher load players first in the hope that the generation can catch up to the load. Um, but in actuality, you're going to have such big blackouts in the United States that, you know, a lot of people are going to see this. It isn't going to prevent an, an entire <coughs> system of some kind going down, I don't think. But this is an attempt to try to make that happen. But, but we can have that meeting and we can talk to those people. So, Talking about outages, any comments about um, the recent outages that they've been experiencing in California around LA? I heard a, a college football game was 
disrupted yeah. because of the power so, outages. So, so they've been having, you know, their growth is not, is overpassing their generation. And so they've been having a lot of, Texas is the same, where they have actual rolling brownouts and blackouts occurring in both of those states. And we're lucky enough that we're not experiencing that. We actually, back in the like um, late 1990s, early 2000s, we were actually seeing that in Wisconsin because we didn't have enough transmission lines to support some of the loads. So when we were at Consolidated Water Power Company, I remember a couple of days where we got caught and we were like, you need to shut down a mill right now or the whole state's dark. And so we had to do some emergency action for that. We're not in anywhere close to that type of problem in Wisconsin nowadays, but that's what you're seeing in California and Texas. You got too many people building and not enough generation. Yep. There are no more questions for Todd. Can we move to the interim general manager's report? Just wanted to point out, uh, as you see in here, the glue annual meeting is October 10th. If anybody's interested in going, uh, Something else happening that day. Isn't yeah, it? that's the problem. It's the same day as our open house, but if anybody wants to go, uh, if you can let me know by next Monday, uh, hotel rates will go up quite substantially after Monday. So if you do have interest in going, uh, a couple of really good speakers there. I think the speaker on battery storage is going to be pretty eye opening and kind of get a really good handle on where that technology is now and where it's going in the future. Book it up. Okay. And where, where is it? It's in La Crosse. Oh, okay. Anyone else plan to attend? I'm going to check my schedule, but is it like a, like in the past, it's like three days? I think it starts on 10 30. Okay. I don't think I'll be able to do that. Any other questions? That was a nice letter from uh, Alex. Nice. nice to see that. Mm -hmm. Any questions or comments on the accounts payable on the check register? Uh, I was uh, on page two. Uh, I have not heard of old time home chores. They've been doing ours for about a little over a year, year and a half. They've been doing a really good job. Okay. Pretty happy with them. Questions on the accounts payable? I see on the credit card charges there's two flags. Where's the second flag? Jason usually has a spare flag, I think, in case it gets oh, wet or okay. damage I've always had kind of one. Okay. Been waiting. Are they different? They must be different flags, right? I'm guessing they're different flags. I'm different not sure what the price difference was so yeah. substantial. Different sizes or something? Could be one of the smaller ones that we use on the original line. Oh. There are no other questions. I would entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Stand adjourned.